I said, are you ready? Yeah. Here is recording. Yay. All right. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Chasing Dreams podcast. Today, we're talking about financing the dreams. And we have financial health strategist, Ms. Tina Riley, who is a full-time entrepreneur of 20 plus years with her business, Premier Accounting Services. And she is now a franchisee of Jackson Hewitt. Uh, my favorite fact about her, she's my mommy. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to the show, Mother. Thank Dear. you for having me. Thank you for having me up. Anything you need. Absolutely. So first and foremost, thank you for one, believing in my vision as much as you do and always willing to serve in the capacity of sharing knowledge and teaching others. Of and course. Even though you are my mother, I'm like, she knows what she's doing. She knows what she's talking about. Like, <laughs> the girl's good. I'm good with time. She's good with money. And that, hey, wins. And that wins a full circle. <laughs> exactly. Like, between the two, we're going to figure this out. <laughs> If you We're here to change generations. I'm here to change generations and generational wealth. So. Absolutely. And if we can manage our time and money, you're unstoppable. So I like to start because off. Time is money. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I like to start off each interview by asking, what is the dream for you? The dream for me at this stage in my life is to make sure that I am making an impact on generations and communities that to make the change the conversation and the dialogue about around money and what it means to have that. And I think I can make an impact in that area. Awesome. That's my dream. So when did you realize the dream and has it changed over the years? I think I believe that I came to the full centering place of the dream just in the last two years. But if I look back over the last 28 years, there were, there were hints of it along, there were breadcrumbs along the way, mm-hmm. but I didn't have enough time, energy, or focus to see it come together fully. So while 20 years ago, when I started doing taxes, I had considered a franchise, but I didn't know, and I knew I was here to help disenfranchised people to not be taken advantage of. But the process wasn't the same back then. And I didn't like the, the, the tone of it. So here we are, fast forward 20 years later, you're, you're right in the middle of where you, which our t- original purpose was. I am. So I guess I said that to say, while chasing your dream, don't feel like if it's not exactly the way you thought it was going to be, when you thought it was going to be, and how you thought it was going to be, that that will take away. Because to be quite honest, 20 years ago, did I have the down payment and the money <laughs> put down on that dream? So it's a dream deferred. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. So when financing the dreams, what are some things to be mindful of? You definitely want to be mindful of how you spend your personal money. Mm-hmm. So that that translates into how you spend someone else's money and how you spend your business's money. So when you say dream, I'm assuming you mean like businesses or what type of dream are we talking about? Yeah. So the the intent of the podcast is to highlight different types of dreams so that people can see themselves in it. So that's why I'm bringing on people from a variety of different sources. Mm-hmm. But when I'm asking that question in particular, I'm saying for someone who wants to chase after whatever the dream may be, mm-hmm. but from a place of this is what I'm going to do outside of the nine to five kind of situation. Okay. So I'll use a case study if that helps. I had a young client come in, young meanie. She's 20. Um, She's out of high school. She's still staying with her parent. And she wants to have a business and making, she wants to sell a line of shirts that state uh, have a purpose for her. That's her dream to have this, this line. Um, and so she met with me to understand the different parts of the business and what it means. And so as we talk, as we spoke, she has money saved. She's working her job. She took on another job because she understood it's going to take money to do some things. 
However, what she didn't understand was, oh, I will use her as a case study. So if there's questions you want to jump in about that, that would be, you know, that's totally fine. So her challenges were she needed a, a press machine. So she thought she had to pay the $7,000 or however much it was. So that's a dream deferred, right? That's a pretty thing. Right. And then she needed, you know, in her mind, she, but she was thinking about these things. Mm-hmm. She had saved up about 3500 So she was working on it. Mm-hmm. And so little by little, month by month. But then she realized another problem she had is that her mother, because this is a dream sometimes can be a dream derailer because parents fear that you're, you know, squandering. But her mother put limitations on her using the car that her mother had let her have. So that's a challenge, right? So now, did you hear the financial challenge in that? Yeah, I can't get to work. (laughs) I can't, I can go to work. Oh. But I can't work my, I can't go to meetings. I can't go meet this person. I can't go check pricing because I suggested to her to go because you know like for example Neiman Marcus sells t-shirts for $80 or $100 so it's not a it's not a a out of whack thought but she needs to and somebody's about to come in to meet me as a client I don't know if we can pause can we pause hi can I help you hi 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 how are you I'm great what can I do for you it is still in use. She comes around 10 to 12, somewhere in that time frame. Yeah, just want to make sure you're not drop, dropping it in the, in the abyss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, she does. Correct. Correct. All right. Have a great one. All right. benefit the the pros and cons of having a uh, a retail spot <laughs> it's fine we'll just cut that point thank you do you want to that was me giving you a cut line <laughs> oh you were talking <laughs> no i said i was giving you a cut line so you could oh okay learn that from Callan. <laughs> i wasn't aware um okay. but go ahead so as we're speaking and going over things, I'm learning that she has more and more financial challenges in financing her dream. So this is actually part for your for your podcast. So anyway, after more discovery, I find out she does have some resources. She is working a second job, and her challenge now is the car. Mm-hmm. Her mother was going to sell her the car for X amount of dollars, and then she could have freedom of the car. Mm. So that's piece of it. Own your own stuff. So no one can tell you what's ready to go. So anyway, moving on, she, so I suggested to her, and then she found then talking even more. So talk to somebody about your dream, first of all, because what you think you might need isn't what you need. Come to find out as I dug deeper into her conversation, she has a family friend that has a machine. Right. And I'm like, why don't you ask them if you can use it on the weekends, work off some time on it or whatever the case is, but work out a nego- negotiable time when his machine isn't in use, that you can use it. Right. Boom. We've just taken off. We've just accelerated your dream because that obstacle is not out, now out of the way. So she reported back. He said, oh, yeah. He said, no problem. What? Sure. Whatever you need. But she never thought to ask. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, my first thought was, isn't it cheaper to just rent the space? <laughs> what like, do you mean? Thought, as opposed to buying a seven thousand dollar machine, was why can't we find some place that where you could use theirs? Because that would be somebody else's dream. No, I'm saying like renting. I'm sure there's places where you mm-hmm. could just rent their equipment. Well, you might be talking about something else. Because what you assume is available isn't readily available. So sometimes we have to, sidebar um, of many, I'm sure, sometimes we have to be sure that what we think is a natural thought isn't a God-ordained thought Mm. or something that you you can notice a hole in the market and it looks common sense to you. 
but it is not common sense to everyone else. That's when you know you're working in your purpose. When you see things differently, like, well, duh. Which took, oh, goes back to your original question, which took me so long to get to why with my dream. I'm thinking it's easy. This is no brainer. This is what everybody does. It's so common sense. How do I, you know, and I'm like, no, maybe not. Maybe it is the way that I can translate it in my mind and spit it out that helps people move forward. So anyway, so she was able to use the, the machine. So that worked out. So saved her some money. But now she has the issue to overcome with the car. So she presented a plan to her mother that she would put half down using half of her money that she had saved so that she can use the other half for inventory and trying out different prints and different tees and all of that. Um, and then from there, she should be able to move forward in her dream by, by Black Friday. And she was thinking two years from now. But because she was wise enough to have a conversation with someone outside of her circle, being point number three, have conversations with people outside of your circle, you know, to get a better, fuller understanding. Mm -hmm. Now we have the obstacle of her, her mother said, no, she doesn't really want to sell her the car. So now I'm going to have, I've advised her to, right. Why would her mother not want to help her? Is that what you're looking like? Right. Like I thought the mother wanted this. Okay. This I'm confused, but. Well, what did you hear? You heard that you have a dream, but parents are fearful of their children's dreams because it's bigger than most of the things that they've ever experienced. And so you're going to have those challenges. Does her mother love her less? No. Does it seem it seem odd to us? Yeah. Because, you know, go ahead. Go ahead. So odd to me is she already said she already agreed to sell the card to her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then took that back. Mm-hmm. And the girl because it was, became real. It became real quicker than she wanted. She's expecting. And then the girl's working two jobs and a business. Like, what is fearful about that? I don't know. I don't know what her mother. You limiting beliefs will keep us bound. And I thought I turned the ring off. I'm sorry. They will keep us bound. And they will stop us from being our best because we are, the unknown is fearful. It is. And it stops more people than you realize. No? No, I get that. I I, I get that. And I think that's part of why I try to be as open as I can. Because mm-hmm. the conversation at least sparks like it could be possible particularly when you see that conversation with people who look like you. Right. Because a lot of times we may think like, oh, that's possible for a white male, even possible for a white woman. Mm-hmm. But if you don't see when black women mm-hmm. being financially successful, you start to think like, mm, that's not a real thing. It, it's a unicorn for us. So mm-hmm. I get that. So what I say it's fear for her mother, is that the real thing? I don't know, but it is plausible. I would like to think that's the thing over her just not sabotaging her daughter. You know what I mean? (laughs) That doesn't sound as much of a, um, that doesn't sound as much. Anyway, I digress. So now we have a derailment in her dream. Because now she has to use her savings for something else. Mm Mm-hmm. So, did, did I bring anything to light here? Well, let, me, let me wrap it up in a bow. Thank you. <laughs> so, things to be mindful of. Using your resources. Mm-hmm. Doing your research. Mm-hmm. Asking questions when you don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. Being working open. <laughs> working hard and being open. And I think another thing we could uh, deter from the story that you shared was just having a sense of resilience, even when those challenges come from unexpected sources. Boom. He's so smart. Pretty little (laughs) bounce. So 
she's still going to chase her dream. She got discouraged, but then she reached out back to me because I was a source of encouragement. Mm-hmm. Now, should that have been my role? I don't know, but it, is that what I do? Yes. Right. And that that's definitely huge. That mindset piece is absolutely number one. So prior to taking the leap, what are some things that we should have in place financially to maximize our chances of success? People, teams, Mm -hmm. solid, proven teams, not people who are still grinding it out like you. They're good along the journey, but they're not your resource. They're more like a support system. So um, you have to have people in front of you that can help you who's already done it. Mm -hmm. Um, mentor is is the common word for the day yes I'll go with that even if it's a visual even if it's a virtual mentor somebody in a book somebody on a podcast somebody on a but you have to have a track record behind that right because just saying I'm I I do this well everybody can say that but have you done it and have you done it well so that's one thing so that doesn't necessarily cost money that might cost you a library subscription and some other small, you know, sources, okay? Um, Financially, you want to have a path. Sometimes it won't make sense. And people like to tell you, oh, six months, well, one bad thing happens and that six months is gone in one day. (laughs) So I don't, I deal more in a real situation. If you're going to trust your faith, and know that this is what you're doing because you've already talked to people, you've already bounced it off of people, it makes sense. And sometimes that person that you expected not to agree is the one that you have to put like a fleece out there and say, okay, well, Lord, if this is right, (laughs) this is probably more than likely she's not going to agree to this. So let me see if I'm doing the right thing. Because you can throw a lot of bad money after good ideas. Mm -hmm. And is that all bad? No. It's not all bad. It might cost you more than you plan to pay. (laughs) But it's not all bad. Um, I would be doing, I would volunteer financially. If I'm chasing a dream that I've seen somebody else walk out, I would volunteer for them. Mm -hmm. Reach out to them. um, Find out what it took for that particular industry. So when I wanted a franchise, I didn't care what it was initially. I talked to a lady, it's a black woman I saw her in Black Enterprise, um, build your virtual board, basically. Your virtual board could be magazines, authors, dead or alive, people that are resounding in where you want to be. Mm-hmm. So that's that. And that's free. YouTube and library, you know. Um, so I reached out to this lady. She owned 31 Burger Kings. Right. That was the look I had. And I was like, That's a lot of money. <laughs> I said. So my question was, how do I get there? Yeah. Like, oh my God, I need to talk to her. And the phone's ringing again. Is that the story? Can you silence your phone, please? <laughs> this away. So I reached out to her. She lived in Ohio somewhere. And she actually gave me 30 minutes of her time. Mm -hmm. People will do that if they see you trying to do something. It took me a long time to get to her. (laughs) Weeks, months, years. But I got to her. But then when I got to her, I was 28, Mm -hmm. 27, something like that. And when I got to her, and when she told me what she did, I was like, oh, hell, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. What she did was she was married, even she had a family, and she was able to save her her paychecks. Yeah, I've heard that of, of a few people. So, so they me were, being a single parent. That's not the story. 
right? So if you can delay, if you can delay some things until you're financially set, it can it can help catapult you faster. So not that that's a bad thing, but you deal with the cards you have and or the cards you made. And so with that in mind, I knew how much she had to save, and there was no way I could do that. Did that mean my dream went away? No. I just had to find a different way to do it. Right. <laughs> Which is that resilience you spoke about. And so I started doing something as a side hustle, if you will, today's terms, which was doing taxes. I've always done taxes. And before I moved into this area, I was like, I won't do another tax return until I'm able to charge for it in my heart. Mm. Because you'll find that too. Whatever your dream and passion is, it's very hard to charge. Mm -hmm. But you have to. Mm -hmm. Fast forward for me 20 years, it's okay. It's okay. And you're worth it because you are making impact. You aren't, you aren't wrong. So if I can change your mindset right now, you're not wrong to charge your worth. You're wrong to rate people over money. And what you might think is too much is not necessarily too much. So what I did when I didn't know what to charge, I called a couple of companies and then went around that to find out what did they, what did they charge? Right. So I knew what to start with. Then other people like, what's your hourly rate? That's a good starting point. What are you willing to accept from an employer? Mm-hmm. So if you're willing to accept $10 an hour, don't. <laughs> you know, Because <laughs> you won't, you know, people will, and what I learned over the years, people value, put, they place an unreasonable value on what you charge. Mm-hmm. When you discount it, give it for free, or all those things. It translates that it's not worth it. Oh, my God, yes. I remember I had a client that wanted me to do an audit. And I was like, okay, fine. She was a good client. You know, I'm thinking I'm doing favors. It's a small organization. It's a nonprofit. And I told her, I think, like, 600 or something like that. And she took it to her board. It was a family. It was a community thing. She took it to her board, and lo and behold, she told me they thought sketch of my proposal because it was way low. Mm-hmm. So I that didn't get the job because they thought, well, she clearly don't know what she's doing, or something to that to that effect. So the point of it is, when you are doing your side hustles or you are putting yourself in the market of your dream, charge, either give it away for free or charge appropriately. Yeah. There's like, there's no middle. Yeah. And so in financing your dream, you're putting those things away and you want to be able to, you want to identify a dollar or a a payment with a purpose. So in my case study example, she's working her second job. We've identified why, why are you working this job? Okay. Half of this money will go towards you saving for the business and the other half will go towards clearing out debt or buying a car. Mm-hmm. When you when you attach a meaning or or, or a, a identifier to a certain amount, one it shows up, <laughs> and then two, it helps you reach what you said you wanted to do. Makes sense. Did I so, answer the question? Is that a no? <laughs> Is uh, that your no face? <laughs> I'm rereading the question, but I I guess we got there. Uh, So what would you say is the best financial management strategy for business owners? And part of this question is because there's budgeting when you know how much you're getting every two weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is the strategy when you don't have a set income? Well, I just kind of said it. See, I answered it when I said whenever you earn any money, one, you have to start off with a list of what needs to be paid for, what needs to be done. You have to know what you need. I need a website. That's going to be $750. I need a phone line because da, da, da. I need equipment because I'm doing this. I need identify everything, everything that you can possibly think of because you've already married your board. You've already checked your resources. You've already done all those things. So now you can put a tangible number on that. That becomes your budget, whether you have it or not. Okay. Okay. Meaning, 
meaning that once you have those items identified and then you can see where I could run with it or not, that's when you go. So when I did my side hustle of taxes, I needed software money. I needed a computer. I needed paper. Doesn't need, doesn't cost that much. Okay. So therefore I could say the money I earned from tax season is going towards our vacation or the money I earned from tax season is going towards blah, blah, blah. Right. And so in, in the cases of anyone else chasing their dream while they're still working, I, I believe in working until you can easily parallel over. Okay. I do believe that because otherwise you're taking unnecessary risk in your, in your fine, in your family situation is all dependent on that. Mm-hmm. If it's just you, you can take more risk. You can live meagerly. You know what I mean? And you can do things on the side. If there's the gig economy. We spoke about that before. Like you guys can do anything to add more revenue, but you have to not spend it. Right. At networking parties, <laughs> you know what I mean. At, at happy hour, because we're trying to build business. Well, which one do you want to build? Because you already identified that I need a computer, I need a microphone. I mean, give me a dream that I can kind of use as an example. You know, her. Oh, so we can use mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I got, I finally got the handle of budgeting when there was a two week paycheck. Mm-hmm. And- building the business and then the money I was receiving from the business was going straight to cover expenses for the business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was step one. But now the money isn't always as consistent and always it, I'm struggling to understand how, like I can't create a budget because I don't know what I'm going to make this month. Well, you can't create a budget, but you can create um, an expense item. Again, what do you need to pay for? You understand what I mean? Like, once you identify what you need to pay for, you start checking off the list so that that thing that you're paying for is understood that it's going to generate me money. If I spend this money on this machine, on this widget, right? I can use that widget directly to earn a dollar. Mm -hmm. so everything you're spending your money on you have to reframe your thinking as to what it what what job does it have to do for you if i drive somewhere across town or out of town to do an event they should at least be covering my money and you have to ask ask for it cover this this and that or why are you doing it you shouldn't come out to do their event you shouldn't call it shouldn't cost you to do their event right and if it does the question i would ask you as a financial person is what was the motivation behind it Mm -hmm. if you say well i'm gonna have 10 hardcore leads afterwards that makes sense to be known and to have my my to be known or to get my name out there and things of that sort which is a lot of what people do that would not make necessary sense if I if I didn't have extra money, because you could do that in other ways. Mm-hmm. You could do a podcast. You could do a video chat. You could do a, you know, send your send your information out. And I think that's that wasn't necessarily a strategy, but I think was that was not a strategy, no, ma'am. <laughs> but what I will say is having that conversation with yourself, like, why am I doing that? Does make sense. Because even in some instances where I do speak for free, I know I have books that I can sell. Mm -hmm. So even if that organization or I'm doing it as a networking favor or someone I know personally, and they're like, you know, I'd love to have you. I'm like, okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and one, because I would do it for free. But two, also because I know that after I speak, I can deliver sales results from the stage that is yeah. the point and that's my whole point that is your strategy the strategy is know why you're doing it have a direct correlation to the money what do you do in the interim is when you would be working on something else you can't just work on something that isn't feeding you every day so until it can feed you every day you should have something else lined up because that is the way you eat 
And that is how your business gets developed nutritionally. Mm -hmm. You cannot put something into something if you don't have anything. So you have to make those, those are the tough decisions because I just want to do my passion. I just want to do my job right now, you know, and that's true. But in the meantime, let's stack this paper to identify the things that it's going to cost me. I know if I do 10 speaking engagements in your case, right? And if I, if I stick to the Eastern region, it's going to cost me approximately $500 a trip. I'm just using numbers. I don't know what your numbers are. So say it's going to cost me 500 a trip, right? To go hotel, travel, food, hair, makeup, nails, whatever it is to make that event go off, right? Mm-hmm. And I want to do 10 of those for the year. I can't do any of them until I fund it. Well, that sounds to me like you might not be doing your dream. Oh, I can't do my dream. But then you can do other things that doesn't cost you to leave your house. Yeah. And then maybe you'll double down on the, out, on the turnout too. In the meantime, you're still working a gig, a job, a gig or something. And it took for me, when I worked a job, it got in the way but I was able to easily transition and see, well, tax season is coming. If I don't spend everything I bring in, then I could do this. Okay. I had gotten my household bills down to a science, balling on a budget, <laughs> you know, and so therefore my living expenses were down. Right. Income okay. was about to come up. So even if it was just even, I would be okay. Right. And I knew I had enough skill set to then I had more motivation to grind it out and take work I didn't want. For example, bookkeeping. I don't like to do bookkeeping because and I wanted I wanted to help people in that space, but it was too much work because people fight you. No, people fight you. And that makes it exhausting for me because I'm not helping you. And I because my my center is helping. And if you just feel like I'm coming in crunching some numbers and you're going to hassle me on the pay, at this position, I can say I'm good. Right. But in the beginning, I couldn't. So that was my gig, if you will. Did that, did, was that better of a strategy? Basically, save what you have, identify what you need so that you have a target to hit. Once you know what the target is on how much it costs you to do the things you want to do, then you work your other hustles and you work your other jobs, even to your chagrin, because you know that that money is going to pay for what I want. Mm -hmm. And then I can leave it that much quicker because I'm doing a great job because I reframe my thinking on, well, this is a job that I hate and it's stopping me. Okay. But also that job is funding your dream. Mm -hmm. So in the case of my the girl that I was talking with, I don't know if she likes her jobs or not. She didn't mention it because she was looking at the money she was making in order to build a dream. Right. And that's a decision that most people won't make. So what would you say is your number one secret to success? Keep going. Just keep going, knowing that no matter what, it's going to be okay. No matter what, I got to do this. Someone asked me before, if you, if all your clients just left, what would you do? Cause this is when I'm working for myself and nobody else, no paycheck, two kids. If all your clients left, what would you do? And I was like, uh, probably more. <laughs> and his response was like, wow. Cause most people will go get a job. Mm. And because I had already left that space, I felt like I was above that that decision. But if I needed to get a job to supplement, I would have. Right. But it would have been in the spa same space. So even one summer, I taught financial um, entrepreneurship for kids at the college. Was that a lot of money in the summer? No. But I got exposure to my market. And I got a paycheck. But I, it was more about practicing my craft okay keep going yeah so what final thoughts do you have for us as the audience your dreams can be realized if you can see it if you've already experienced any of it in your mind and your vision you just see it then it is going to happen 
when you resign on, yes, it's going to happen, that takes 50% of the problems out of the way. Because people want to quit because they don't know that if it's if it's worth it. Well, have you seen your, if, if you've been allowed to experience certain levels of your dream and you felt out of place in that space, that was, that was God's way of just showing you you too will be here. Mm. Get used to this kind of thing. It's going to be, it may be a long time, maybe a short time. That's on you. How long it takes is on you and how quickly you surrender to that space and like, okay, where do you want me to go? Um, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to do it? And so once you do that, be a, and that's one big thing. Uh, so just being mindful of that. Also, so the next thing I would ask is that you be mindful of what you think about your money and I attach it to something. So if you know what it's going to cost you because you've done your research, that number is going to get easier to make. A aha moment for me was when I did that, and that wasn't that long ago, I was like, I want this. I just gave myself permission to dream about everything I wanted financially and what it will cost. I put it on a piece of paper. Then I realized, oh, guess what? I had that much money last year. Where did it go? Right. So being mindful of where you're putting your money, but it never had a, it never, just like you say about time, if you don't assign it a, a role, it goes away. Mm -hmm. If you don't assign your money a job, yeah. it goes away very easily. Nickel here. Five dollars there, ten dollars here, five minutes here. Same thing. It's the same thing. If you don't assign this hour or this hundred dollars a job, it will never have a job to do. And essentially, you'll enjoy it. <laughs> you'll enjoy that extra sleep or that extra game on your phone or that extra thing that you did with that money. But it didn't do its job because it was never assigned a job. Maybe that's a better one. Assign your money. Okay. And where can people find you? Hmm. Um, well, we're we're restructuring everything, but right now my email address is Tina at P R E M A C C T S V C S dot com. And that's also my website, Premier Accounting Services abbreviated. But all that is changing and I'm rebranding and I'm launching in the next month. So <laughs> Well, do you know what it's going to be? Because the podcast comes out in, in the top of 2020. So. Oh, great. So I will say it's going to be. ask you that again. Hold on. Oh. Uh... Why you ain't telling me to do this first? <laughs> I don't know this stuff. Wake up. So it's going to be, what, 20-minute podcast? I'm not sure because I, I got to cut out the extra, so I don't know. Okay. No, I'm just saying in general. <laughs> oh, it's just however long it takes. I don't know. my. That's the one on my to-do list today is to get all my content done. Let me know when you're ready. I will, as soon as I find it. I think it's True Fire MD. But of course, I can't find it. What time is your next one? That's it for today. I just got work to do. And maybe go to the movies. Harriet comes out today. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hold on one second. Let me look it up. I don't know if I feel like leaving the house is cold. Hmm. Huh. Who are you telling?
How cold is it there for you, though? Uh, probably 50. I don't know right now because my phone's on airplane mode. All right, so it's true fi MD. So is that going to probably be my whole LinkedIn and everything, too? You said LinkedIn? Am I gonna, is that going to be, like, what would that be? My, just my name? For LinkedIn? What's your, okay. Um, true fi MD. All right, I'm ready. Right. So where can people find you? You can find me on LinkedIn by just my name, Tina M. Riley, R-I-L-E-Y. You can find me on my website, which is TrueFiMD, um, T-R-U-F-I-M-D.com. And basically social media hashtags with my name as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking your time today and just sharing those financial gems. I hope it blessed somebody. And we will see you next week. Thank you. Have a great